Today I want to show you 10 tips for working in Logic Pro that I wish I knew 10 years ago. Now, full disclosure, I actually just switched to Logic from Pro Tools five years ago, but I might have switched earlier if I'd known about these 10 tips. So let's go ahead and jump into Logic and take a look at them. But before we do, let me just say that if you're struggling to get a mix that you're happy with inside Logic, these tips are helpful, but they're not going to make your mix sound better. So if you want your mixes to sound better, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a Pro Mix from the link in the description below. Let's go and look at tip number one, which is automate anything just by clicking on it. To enable this, all we need to do is go up to our mix menu here and go down to auto select automation parameter in read mode and make sure this is selected. This is not selected in default, so you'll need to go in and turn this on. And then once it's on, we can now click on anything and it will bring up the automation lane for that and we can immediately start automating that specific parameter. So for example, if we hit A on our keyboard to bring up our automation lanes here, in default, it just has our volume automation, which makes sense. It's the main thing you're gonna be automating. And if you wanted to automate anything else, you'd have to go into one of these drop down menus and find the parameter you're trying to automate to get to it. But now with this enabled, I can just click on whatever I want to automate and now I'm automating my pan position. Or if I want to go back to my volume, I can click on my volume and now I'm automating my volume instead of my pan position. And that's the basic levels of it, but we can get way more extreme if let's say I wanted to go into this EQ and I just wanted to automate the gain of this specific frequency band. Well now if you look here, it says peak three gain and I could draw in a curve that's just going to bump up here for this section of the song. You can automate anything with this and the time that it took me to select that was basically nothing compared to before where I'd have to go in and find it in a menu and all that stuff. So a big old pain, this is much, much faster. And it's way faster compared to how you would do it in Pro Tools where you'd have to manually add every parameter that you wanted to automate from a menu. I don't know if they still do that, but they used to do it and it was such a pain. This is so much faster, but depending on how much automation you're trying to do, it's not as fast as tip number two, which is to automate anything in touch or latch mode. So with your track selected, if you go down here and select touch mode, now what you can do is while the song is playing, just write in, draw in whatever animation you want to have happen. So let's say I want to have this frequency band just kind of sweep. You see I'm just drawing that in and it's automating actually like several parameters because it's not just the gain of the plugin, but it's the frequency and the Q factor. It's automating all of those and writing all that automation in for me, it saves you a bunch of time and allows you to do a bunch of really complicated automation much, much faster. Now, a quick note about touch versus the other options here. Touch just means that as soon as I stop automating, it's gonna pull it back up to wherever it was before I automated it. So as I'm playing with this here, you'll see as soon as I let go, it just puts it back to where it was before. Whereas if we look at the other option latch here, in latch, it will just stay wherever I leave it. So with latch selected, when I leave it, it just stays there and it stays with whatever the last point that you touched it was. So touch is generally what I use, but latch is also a great option depending on what you need. And important note, always be sure to put it back into read mode. Otherwise, every single thing you do on that track from here on out is also gonna be automated. So always, always, always put it right back into read mode at the end. Tip number three is mid side EQ. Mid side EQ is where you are able to process the sides independently of the middle or process the middle independently of the sides. So this can be great if you wanna bring out some extra presence to your side information, maybe make it feel a little bit wider. Uh, it's also great if you wanna add a little bit more impact to your drums and you're just working in mastering or maybe you're working on a stereo synth and you're trying to bring out some more body on just the center part of that synth and make the sides brighter. You can get very specific in how you're EQing them to just be the sides or mid separately and a lot of people don't realize that Logic actually has mid side EQ built into it. Here we have a linear phase EQ, but you also have the same option on the channel EQ. And to get to the mid side option, you just go under processing here and default it's in stereo, but we could switch to mid or side only. Now this is gonna be for the entire EQ. So if you wanted to do independent mid and side EQ moves, you would just need two instances, one for the sides, one for the mids, but that's no problem. Okay, so for example, as I'm listening to this here in stereo, I wanted to boost a little bit of the presence in the guitars. It's just gonna do it across the entire mix. So it's gonna basically just bring up everything which doesn't give you that extra separation in the sides. Whereas if I switch this to side only, it's much more subtle. And I can find that point where I'm now just getting this extra lift out to the sides, right?
So this is a pretty complicated EQ move. If you don't really understand EQ, understand EQ better first. Don't worry about this for now. But once you really understand EQ, this is the kind of thing that can get, help give you a little bit of an extra edge in your mixes and masters. Now, really quickly, if you are enjoying this video and you think it would be helpful to other people, could you be sure to like it? It makes a big difference in terms of YouTube knowing to show it to other people. It only takes a little second. And if you're really not liking it, be sure to hit that dislike button twice. I know I've said that a lot, but it's still a hilarious joke to me. Anyway, let's get back to it. Tip number four is project alternative. So say you're working on a mix and you want to make some pretty hefty revisions, but you don't want to necessarily lose the current mix that you have. You want to make sure that you go back to it if you need to. Well, project alternatives are a great solution for this. If you just go up to file, down to project alternatives, you can create a new alternative. So if we were in our mixing example here, this might be something like mix two. And then you'll see here that now at the top here, it shows the same name, but it has this mix two option. And all this is contained into one logic file. So you still only have one logic file that you're opening up, but I can now switch under my project alternatives between whichever project alternative I wanna be working on. So I could always go back to that earlier previous edition of my mix if I needed to, but I can confidently and comfortably make crazy changes if I want to in my mix revisions, knowing that I could always go back to previous alternatives if that's what made sense. So project alternative, simple, but very, very powerful and very helpful. Tip number five is play from last locate position. This is pretty cool. Basically, the standard play function in Logic is that it's just going to keep playing. So if I let it play for a minute, and then I stop, and then I play again, it's just gonna continue where it ended. But if I go up to my play option here and I right click on it, or you can hold control on the keyboard and click on it and go down to play from last locate position, then every time I play, it's gonna start. from that last selected locate position. This is super helpful if you're just working on the same section of the song and you wanna keep re-listening to that same section. You don't necessarily need to be looping, but you wanna be able to go back to it quickly without setting your cycle region and all that stuff. This is definitely my preferred general setting for my play option. And it's something that I loved in Pro Tools. When I came over to Logic, I couldn't easily figure out how to turn it on. So I just worked for years without it. And when I rediscovered it, I was like, oh my God, why did I spend the last several years not using this option? So. Definitely a helpful little tip. Tip number six is to play from any selected region. So for example, here, I have these chorus vocals separated out. And if I just wanna start in this chorus, right on this vocal, I can hold shift on the keyboard and hit spacebar. And it's gonna play from that vocal. But let's say I wanna try this ending of this chorus. No, actually I wanna play from this one. I hold shift on the keyboard and hit spacebar. No, actually it's that first chorus, shift on the keyboard, space bar. So you get the idea, you can just quickly move around the different sections in your song if you have any regions that are broken out into what you need. It's also a great way if you're like, I just wanna listen to this one little vocal really quick, you can just select that vocal region, hold shift on the keyboard and hit space bar and it will just play that section of the song. And again, use this in conjunction with soloing and now I could just listen to this vocal. And then I could jump over here and just listen to this vocal here. So you get the idea. Shift plus spacebar allows you to play whatever region that you have selected. It's very, very handy. Tip number seven is elastic audio regions. This is called time compression expansion in Pro Tools, or at least that's what I called it. I think that's what it was called. And this tool allows you to shorten or lengthen just a region really quickly. You don't need to pull up your flex modes or anything like that. I could just select a region and shorten it. So for example, if I wanted to shorten this entire region, all I do is I hold option on the keyboard as I come to the side of the region here, and I can just shorten that region and it's gonna compress everything in it relative to the starting length down to the shortened length. Now, you can see how you, if you just have a loop and let's say it's not quite in time at the song, but you know it's exactly four bars, you could shorten it using this to make it four bars perfectly inside your session. But the way that I typically use this is for shortening something like just a left or right vocal that's maybe slightly too long. So for example, let's say this vocal here, it's already edited, so it's more or less perfectly in time, but let's say I wanted to shorten this left vocal just a little bit, I could come here and select my track hit Command T to trim it, go to the beginning here, hit Command T, or a little bonus tip here for you, if you have your marquee tool set as your second tool, I could then just select this, 
click on it and it will separate that out for me. And then I can hold option on the keyboard at the end of this region and just shorten just my left ear vocal. This can start to sound a little bit processed. So you always wanna listen back. You might need to play around with it a little bit, but it's a really fast way to stay in super quick editing mode if you're just kind of tightening things up and can get you out of some pinches if you just need some areas to be a little bit shorter, some a little bit longer. Generally speaking, I try to not do it on my lead vocal or lead elements, but I don't mind doing it and I find it disappears perfectly on my backing elements or side elements. Uh, and it can work pretty well and sound pretty cool on things like guitars and synths as well. Tip number eight is simply track stacks, specifically summing stacks. So there's a good chance that you know this already, but if you don't, if you just select whatever tracks you wanna group together and then hold Command Shift and D on the keyboard, you can create a summing stack. And this allows you to one, have a folder that I can now just condense down. I could name this vocals. And then now I can see that this is my vocals, but I can open and close it. It can make my session a little bit cleaner. But then I also can process these vocals all together in one place. So let's say I want to just do a little bit of EQ on these vocals if we listen to them here. So I just want to cut a little bit of this out, maybe add a little bit more presence. I can do that quickly on all the vocals in one place, on one EQ on the track stack, which is really cool. And again, if I think back to my Pro Tools days, to do this in Pro Tools, I would have had to create an aux track, assign the input for that aux track, then go over to my individual tracks and assign the output of the aux tracks over to that input. And then I didn't have the folder function to collapse it down. I think they've added that since I left Pro Tools, but I did, used to not be able to do that. But in Logic, I just hit Command, Shift, and D, and it creates a track stack for me, does all the routing for me. It's really, really cool. Tip number nine is undo volume and pan changes. Oh my God, when I switched over to Logic from Pro Tools, I was so annoyed that I couldn't undo the changes that I would make. If, if let's say I was working on a mix and I thought, well, I think I wanna try that vocal down just a little bit. And then I realized, you know, I actually don't like that better and I wanted to put it back. If I hit Command Z to undo, it wouldn't undo it. And I was like, well, I don't remember what that was at now. So now I kinda just have to try to approximate it. It was infuriating it. And that's because the default setting is for those two options to be off. But if you go in under your undo history, under edit, I can turn on mixer and that will allow me to now undo that volume change. So in default, this is turned off. So if I were to try to undo that volume change, it's not gonna do anything. But when I go back to my undo history, I turn that on and now I can undo that volume change. So the nice thing is as long as you haven't closed your session, it actually keeps that history for you. You just need to turn that option on and then you can undo and redo that volume change if you want. And tip number 10 also has to do with this undo history. Let's say you make a bunch of automation moves that are entirely crazy, or you just do a bunch of things in your mix and you're like, actually, I wanna undo everything I just did. If you pull up your undo history, you can just find whatever the previous thing that you wanna get back to was, the last point before you made all the changes, and click on that, and then it's gonna pull you back to that perfectly. It's gonna undo everything up until that point in just one click, which is super cool. Again, probably something you might've known about, but it took me way too long to discover. And if you didn't know about it, maybe it's gonna save you a big headache down the road. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Before you go, two quick things. One, again, if you're struggling to get a mix that you're happy with, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix from link in the description below. It's completely free. It's helped thousands of people. So I know it's gonna help you. And two, I'd love to hear from you. Which one of these tips was most helpful to you or are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.